Hi there, and let's get to it. A welcome introduction with the 12.5 upgrade was the inclusion of effects in the Open Effects panel. To access this window, you just have to click on the Open Effects button in the top right corner. You can then scroll up and down to see your list of effects, or you can use the search bar at the very top to look for specific kinds of effects. To apply an effect, you just have to click, drag, and drop it onto one of your nodes. You can only apply one effect per node at a time, but you can always generate additional nodes and apply more effects to those. Before you get carried away, keep in mind that open effects are very processor intensive, so you might see a significant drop in your workstation performance if you start employing too many of these. If that's the case, remember to take advantage of the smart cache, and you can even indicate individual nodes by right-clicking and selecting node cache on to make sure that they're prioritized during the caching process. Once you apply an effect to a node, its controls will come up on the right-hand side in the open effects window. Additionally, some effects come with on-screen controls, which will appear as soon as the effect has been added to the node. You can then use your mouse to make the appropriate changes. There's two ways you can remove the effects. One is to right-click on your node and to say remove OFX plugin. And the second way is just to delete the node altogether. Let's take a look at the effects themselves. I've split these up into groups so that they're easier to process, but I highly recommend that you find some time to just open up a project and play around with all the effects and see what they do. There's quite a few blur effects included, and I find that most of them are substantially stronger than the blur tool that comes with the software in the central palettes. I particularly liked the lens blur because it focuses on light sources and allows you to apply a sort of bokeh effect. So here I can switch between pentagon to triangle, and you can see this reflected in the lights on the street. And this is pretty great if you want to imitate a lens pulling into focus in a shot where the lens was always in focus. I then found this one standout effect called Color Space Transform, which seems to operate very much like the raw camera palette, in which you can indicate any kind of color space and gamma as a starting point, and then shift those based on the output that you want to see. I think that's really useful because quite often I end up working on footage that's been transcoded from a raw format that is no longer raw, but still has that really flat log look. So I have these really dynamic looking shots, but the colors are kind of dull. So I can then specify that I'd like to have these shots to be output as Rec. 709, and suddenly we get this really nice punchy effect that you would get from Rec. 709 LUTs. You then have some effects that will apply the more physical nature of the frame of your image. So things like dent, mirrors, mosaic, vortex, and waviness will have some pretty significant impact on the way the image looks. And at first glance, it might feel like they're not very practical, but you have to keep in mind the amount of control that you have in the settings and how you can tweak these to achieve a very specific and perhaps desirable look, especially when you combine that with some of the other tools that you have in DaVinci, like for example, the power window. There's also some more stylistic effects like edge detect, emboss, and ripples. We've also got a series of effects dedicated to imitating old film looks or effects. The most obvious one being film grain, which gives you quite a substantial amount of control over how the grain looks and how it will interact with the footage. You then also have something like JPEG damage, which I originally thought implied would fix any JPEG artifacts. And instead I dragged and dropped it on and found that it does the exact opposite. I've had to use this method before in the past when I've had to make something look like it was recorded on an old digital camera or an old phone, and the only way to do it prior to that was to actually export your video in a low bitrate JPEG, but now we can just use an effect for it, which is pretty cool. We've also got lens flare, which we looked at in a previous video looking at effects tracking. And the remaining effects I would classify as lighting effects. So the glow gives you some wonderful control over the highlights of your image and allows you to spread the brightness or to further expand the light source. When I turn this on and off, you can see it's had a pretty substantial effect on the headlights on these motorcycles. And light rays work in much the same way, but instead of diluting the light outwards, it will direct all the light in a single direction. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time.